This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back. Well guys, today we're going to do a combination video and the topic of today is how to apply stencils in Substance Painter. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through the full process because I want to show you how to create your own stencils and how to apply that to 3D models that you have created uh, by yourself, okay? So it's not only important to follow the steps in the video, but it's important to understand what is exactly happening so you can apply it in your own skill set, okay? So that said, let's jump in and have some fun. Here we go. Okay guys, well, we're gonna start off in Photoshop and the reason for that is uh, because I want to show you that stencils used in Substance Painter can be created uh, by you. You can create anything you want and you can use that as a stencil, okay? So we're in Photoshop, we're gonna go to uh, New. I'm gonna create a file that's 800 by 800 pixels at 75 resolution, okay? And we're just gonna hit okay. Now I got a completely transparent background. Uh, for this to work, I need a black background. So with black selected here, okay, I'm gonna go to my brush. You can use the fill bucket, but I'll just use my brush and I'm just gonna pull over that. So we have this black image, okay? Now the text or the image or whatever I want to use as a stencil needs to be white on that black background. So I'm gonna change my swatch color to white. And what we'll do is we'll go into the, uh, the text here. And what we'll do is image tutorials. Okay. We're going to increase the size a little bit. Let's center it out. And we're good. Okay. So this is going to be our stencil. All right. So we're going to go to file save as we're going to save it as a psd file and i'll call it uh, mht stencil oh i got my caps on sorry and i'll save that on my desktop all right and there we go so now that we have that uh what we're going to do is we're going to jump into maya to create a simple object that we can then take into substance painter so we can actually use our stencil okay here we go all right guys we're in uh, maya uh we are going to create a very very simple object in this case a polygon cube so we're simply going to click on cube there we go and by default, this cube is already UV'd. So if I go to UV and UV editor, you can see that it has been UV'd. So we're ready to go. And with this selected, I'm gonna to go to file, export selection, and I'm gonna export that as an OBJ. And I already have a file with a similar name here. So I'm just gonna overwrite that one. So we're gonna save this cube out as cube1obj.obj, uh, .obj, okay? And overwrite, yep, yeah, there we go. So we have our stencil created in Photoshop. We have our object that's UV'd created in Maya. And now let's bring these two into Substance Painter. Here we go. All right, guys, well, we're in Substance Painter. Um, what I'd like to do first is go to view and reset uh, user interface. So we all have the same layout, okay? And then next thing I wanna do is I want to bring in the stencil that we have created, okay? So I'm just going to go to my other screen. I got two screens here. I'm going to select the stencil that we created. I'm just going to drag that in and drop that into this area. Okay. I'm going to import for current session only. And it's been added. All right. Next thing, we're going to bring in our cube that we have created in Maya. All right. So we're going to go to file. We're going to go to new. And I'm gonna leave my template setting as is. I haven't selected a mesh yet, so that's where I'm gonna plug in my cube. So select and cube, okay. I'm gonna leave this as is. I'm gonna leave it at 1K map size, that's good. I haven't baked any maps yet, so there's nothing to add, and I'm just gonna hit okay. We'll give that a sec. And if I now scroll out with my middle mouse wheel here, you can see that our cube has been added. And just to prove to you that this is in fact the UV cube that we created, if I go to my 3D 2D view, here is our UV layout. Okay, and back to 3D. All right, now before we apply our stencil, I want to put some kind of material on our cube just to make it look a bit cooler. 
So uh, let's see, we'll go into smart materials here and we'll go with uh, steel. Let's see what kind of options we have here. Preferably something that is, yeah, let's see. Yeah, we'll do this, scratched steel. Actually, before we do that, uh, I forgot one thing we need to do first. First, we need to bake maps because when we apply the materials, they have to leave that information somewhere, okay? So I'm gonna hit bake textures and normally you would choose which one you want. I'm just gonna select all of them and then later on we can pick and choose which one we want. Now, when you do it that way, you will get some errors in your log file uh, down here because it doesn't have all the information to bake all the maps properly, but the ones we need, we're good, okay? So I'm gonna click on shelf to go back. We now have our maps baked that will allow us to store information as we change the texture here. And that said, we're now gonna take the steel scratched. We're gonna drag that in. It's gonna calculate, and there you go, all right? And you can clearly see that that has been added. Now, if we, hit this little uh, folder to open it. We have the option, for example, to click on dirt. We can uh, increase the roughness if you like, or not, depending on what you want. We'll keep it nice and rough, that's good. And then you have the a metallic setting that you can tweak as well, all right? Now, let's see what else we got. We got our steel base. Okay, we'll leave all that, all right. So time for a stencil. So we want to stencil that onto this object. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna make sure that this is nice and front and centered like so. So as we are holding down Alt and left clicking and moving it, we're gonna hold down the Shift key to have it jump to this position, all right? Now with that in place, we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need a brush to apply our stencil and we're gonna need our stencil. Now, the way this works is like a cardboard cutout of let's say a letter and a spray paint brush okay so the stencil will be held in front of our object and we're going to use the brush to apply it that's pretty much how this works so we're going to choose a brush that we want to use for this and if we uh, want to do this we have to create a new layer first because that's paintable so we're going to go up here add a layer make sure that layer is selected and then down here you have the stencil option and you have the brush option. Right now, this is the brush and this is the hardness of the brush. I want that to be um, a bit uh, rougher, if you will, or tougher. So we're gonna go to brushes and I'm gonna look for my default and I'm gonna select the default hard brush. And when I do that, you can see that it changes here. So I now have a brush and I have an alpha. Uh, what I do not have is my stencil just yet, okay? So now we're gonna go down to stencil. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna look for our MH Tutorials stencil. There you go. And we're gonna scroll until we have this selected and in our screen. I'm gonna hold Alt to move this. So the text is properly in front of my cube here. And now the only thing I need to do is to increase my brush size and when they start painting over this text, it will take that information. Before we do that, here are the things that will be affected when we do that. The color, the height, the rough, the metal, and so forth. If you don't want the height to be affected, you turn off these tabs. I'm just gonna go with everything that we have. And I'm just gonna start to go over this. Like so. And what I'll actually do is I'll go to height here. And I'm just gonna increase that a little bit and we'll do roughness and metallic. I'll bring all of those values up. Uh, let's see, we can actually tweak that if we want, but we won't. Okay, let's just go over that once again. And now you can clearly see that we have height information. And in this case, because of our settings, it's embossed on top of our material. 
And if you don't want that, what you do is you take a negative height value. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to, let's say here, hopefully I'm at a negative value. Oh, I'm, on a, I'm on the wrong slider. Sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, height. That's our color. Where's my value? There we go. Okay. So when I now brush over my object, it's been brought in. Okay. So the only thing now I need to do is go in and turn off my stencil. And I can now zoom out and zoom in and you can see that this has been applied perfectly okay what I'll do is uh, just to make this pop a little bit better I will uh, go in to my viewer settings and I'm just gonna bring up the environment opacity all right okay so that is how that is done if you have any questions let me know and that said thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time bye